Welcome to Painting with a Scientist. Today, we are going to be talking all about Cnidarians. Cnidarians have a very strange spelling. The way that their name is spelled starts with a C, Cnidaria. Jellyfish are Cnidarians, and so are sea anemones, and that is our topic for today. But before we get started, I want to give a quick hello and a welcome to those who are watching live. Hello, Space Queen. I am feeling happy today. I love painting with a scientist. Hello, Nerding for Nature. Nerding for Nature is my good friend up in Canada. And um, <clears throat> welcome to her. And thank you for being here as our moderator today on YouTube. Hello to Faith, to Irshana, to King Husky, to Haley, to Duck King within hiking distance. Welcome. Happy to have you guys here today. And hello to someone watching from Bahrain. We have viewers all over the world, and I am excited to share with you this painting project today and to learn more about the fascinating animals called sea anemones. Most people think that sea anemones are plants. You've probably seen them before in tide pools or in nature documentaries. Sea anemones are not plants, even though they look a lot like flowers, they are animals. And in our episode today, I'm going to be using this guide. I dropped a link into the chat a few minutes ago with where you can pick it up. If you go to patreon.com slash science mom, it's a free download so that you can have a guide to paint along with, but you can also just paint freehand. However you would like to do it, you can use markers, colored pencils. And to start off with, I am really curious. Tell me something in the chat that you know about sea anemones already. Let's collect just a few facts while I'm getting my paint set up. And if you don't have a printer, you could definitely just color along freestyle. You don't have to, you don't have to print it out. The colors that we'll be using, I'll go through right now, but while I'm doing that, I'm kind of keeping an eye on the chat because I'm curious if anyone knows something interesting about sea anemones. Let me know in the chat if you do. So the main colors that we'll be using are blue, brown, and white, but sea anemones can be so many different colors. And you have a lot of, a lot of freedom with what colors you choose for your sea anemones. But for our ocean water and for the ocean floor, we'll be using some white and some browns. Oh, and I see Space Queen says that sea anemones can clone themselves. Certain species can. They can actually split themselves in half to make two new sea anemones. And I think I saw another good sea anemone fact pop up. Sharon says clownfish live in them. And this is true. If you've seen Hi uh, Finding Nemo, you know that that little clownfish Nemo lived inside a sea anemone. Oh, and this is a great fact. Linnea says, and, or Linnea says, sea anemone gets its name after the terrestrial anemone flower that looks similar. And it does. And that is how they got their name because they have all these tentacles that spread out and look sort of like anemone flowers. King Guy says they live in the sea. And Juniper says they're mostly green. The ones in tide pools, definitely. The ones in tide pools have a green color, but they can come in all sorts of different colors. And then another good, good fact here from Amelia, to eat, they open up their tentacles and then snap them shut. They do move their tentacles. Those are some great facts about sea anemones. And I would encourage you after we do our episode to dive deeper and research more because these are fascinating animals. Let's get started now by bringing the view closer so that you can see it a little bit better. Oh, and I love this fact too. I'll throw this one up really quick. So they're classified, like we said, they are Nidaria. And I'm gonna bring up my little, my little logo here real quick first because I have the hardest time pronouncing this. And because I, and King Husky says clownfish like them, because I have a hard time pronouncing it, I actually made my own little banner with the pronunciation guide to help me out. So here it is, Nidaria. They are Nidarians and they are really cool, cool animals. And the Galen, Galen family says they have a pink anemone in their saltwater aquarium, that is awesome. Now I'm gonna bring our painting a little closer so that you can see it better. Let me kind of adjust our light down and I'm gonna get my paints ready. 
And while I'm getting my paints ready and we're talking, if you would like to get out your colored pencils, your markers, whatever it is that you're using. And again, you don't need to feel limited by, by your resources because art is all about making do with what you have. And hello to Philip and Gianna and I'm seeing a whole bunch of comments up in the chat. Love cat meow. Super happy to have you guys here today. Now you don't need to feel limited by what you have. If you don't have a printer, you can print along freestyle. And if you don't have paints, you can use markers or crayons, but I'll just tell you what colors I'm getting ready. So I've got a bunch of white here that I'll be using and I'm gonna mix up some light blue and green and then also some browns. And you can see that my little palette is a little messy because my paint dried before I had a chance to wash it off last time, but that is all right. If I have extra brown mixing in with my paint, it'll just be like a little fleck of sand in our drawing that is floating past. So I'm gonna get my light browns and maybe a couple little darker browns. I'm gonna get those ready. And then I'm gonna mix all my paints up. So I'm gonna grab a bunch of white and kind of share it in between these colors because I do want to lighten up my colors a bit so they're not too dark. And then we'll mix mix it all together and we'll paint our background first. The sea and enemies that we're painting today, they are living in rather shallow coastal waters. But I do think it would be nice to have just a little bit of a greenish hue to our watercolor here. So I'm mixing in just a little bit of green here and that looks pretty good to me. Now we're gonna paint our backdrop here. And I'm painting in kind of in a dappled format because water often has, the way that the light comes through, you get sort of this dappled pattern in the water of lights and darks. So if I paint sort of some lighter patches first up here at the top, and then if I add just a little bit more blue here, it will help my water look like there's a little bit of a ripple effect and we have that light coming through the water. The Nidarians are closely related to jellyfish and to corals. They're in the same family. So Nidarians include jellyfish, coral, and sea anemones. And the sea anemones are really cool. I have to tell you, I have real fond memories of seeing sea anemones because when I was a kid, we used to take this trip every single summer to go up to Oregon to see my grandparents. And we'd always go to the ocean, to the coast, and we'd spend time looking in tide pools. And there were these green sea anemones in the tide pools. And if you reached in with your finger and just touched their tentacles, then they would close up into like a little brown ball. And I thought it was really neat. I thought they were really neat to see. Now I want our water to darken in color just a little bit as we go down. So I'm gonna add a tiny bit more blue to my paint here and just a tiny bit more green as well. Sort of this turquoise type green. And then I'm gonna mix that in. And remember, if you're painting along with me, it is completely okay to pause the video. If you feel like I'm going too fast, just pause and then you can start again as soon as you have caught up. That's one of the great things about doing a painting lesson online. You can totally go at your own pace. And I'm going to paint down in this diagonal pattern so that this is my water in the background, but then I also have, I've got a rock here and I've got sand at the bottom. And then our main star of the show is this hermit crab that has a sea anemone on top of him. And painting around the sea anemone is a little tricky. We have a lot of tentacles here that we're gonna be painting later. And I don't wanna get too close to those because that might make it a little harder for me to, to paint my tentacles depending on what color I'm using later. So I'm gonna just sort of paint loosely around my sea anemone here. But I'll leave that little palette of color on my palette so that then I can come back later and kind of touch it up. So there we go, our ocean water is all colored in. And if you want to add fish and jellyfish in here, you totally can. You can add in a, a little jellyfish or two, 
or you can draw some, you know, a dolphin swimming by or some fish or an octopus. You can, you don't need to be limited to only draw what you see me draw. You could make this painting your own by adding in other things too, anything you want. It's your painting. All right, now that our ocean water is complete, we are going to paint this rock. And this rock down here kind of meets our sandy bottom. I want my rock to be kind of a darker brown and my sandy bottom to be a little bit of a lighter brown. So I'm gonna get a new brush and then I'm gonna mix in this white with this brown and see if it's a color that I like. It's a little bit on the pastel type side, but I think that looks pretty good. I think it would look better though with a tiny bit of green mixed in. Because in the ocean, a lot of times when you have rocks, especially if you have rocks in these shallow tidal waters, there will be a bit of algae growing on the rocks and they'll actually have just a little bit of a greenish hue to that brown. So there we go, that looks a little better to me. Get my brush just a little bit wet so that my brown paint goes further. And now we're gonna paint the rock. If you find a tide pool that has sea anemones in them, the sea anemones that are this light kind of greenish color that are pretty common in tide pools around California and Oregon, and I, I imagine on the East Coast as well, although I've never explored tide pools on the East Coast, they don't have stingers that will sting you. If you gently touch their tentacles, they'll react and you'll see the tentacles go like this and pull inward, but your finger will not be hurt. That is not true of all sea anemones though. There are some sea anemones that do have a pretty painful sting. The name Nidaria actually comes from a word meaning sting and all of the Nidarians, jellyfish, coral, and sea anemones, they have the potential to sting either to protect themselves from predators or to capture prey. And the, the sea anemone that clownfish live in, on Finding Nemo where he talks about making sure that you brush and rub against the tentacles, that's a real life thing. Clownfish do rub up against the tentacles of a sea anemone in order to make sure that they stay immune to the stings and it also protects them. They're able to, to live in that, that cloud, live in that anemone and it's kind of like a nice little symbiotic relationship where the, the sea anemone and the benefits from the, the clownfish eating little tiny shrimp and other things that might be in there and keeping it clean. And then of course the clownfish benefits by having a home where other bigger fish are not gonna come in and eat it. So it works really well. A little more brown down here to finish out the bottom. And I am curious, I know that our, our, my friends who are moderating our chat today within hiking distance and have, um, hurting for nature, I know that they have both spent time at the coast, either in British Columbia or in Oregon and Washington. And I'm curious, what colors have you guys seen sea anemones be? So I mentioned that I've seen sort of a light bluish green color of sea anemone, but nerding for nature and um, within hiking distance, have you guys, and, and to everyone else who's in, in the chat and watching live, what colors have you seen for sea anemones? Let me know, let me know in the chat. And then this whole entire shape right here, this whole entire oblong shape that I'm painting is my big rock that has several sea anemones living on it. And I'm just carefully painting around the border of my sea anemone. And then I'm painting around the outline of my big hermit crab as well, because we're gonna have a nice hermit crab here that has a sea anemone on its back. And you can see that as I go, my color for brown is changing just a little bit. Ooh, Nerding for Nature says that most of the ones they see in British Columbia are pink, but they've got some green ones. Neat. And within hiking distance says they've seen white, orange, and dark green on the Oregon coast. So you can see that when you when it comes time to paint our sea anemones, you can pick almost any color you want 
And there will probably be some type of sea anemone that has that color. But pink, green, white, orange, and blue, and purple, those are some of the common colors that I've seen when I've looked up pictures of sea anemones. In real life, the green ones and kind of a reddish, pinkish one, those are the only colors I've seen in real life, in person. Olga says that they like the pink ones. They are kind of like a rainbow. Oh, and blue too. Nice. Now that we have our rock done, it's time to paint the sandy ocean floor. And the sandy ocean floor is going to look more realistic if we have some texture to it. So for this one, I'm going to get a different brush. And I'm going to do, um, this is real fun painting in my opinion, when you just kind of go like dab, 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 dab across the top. I'm going to do some of that just to give, give some good texture. So I'm mixing in light brown, dark brown, and I think I'll do a little bit of orange as well for our sandy ocean bottom. We'll see how this color looks. Get some of that orange in there. That looks pretty good. And now I'm just gonna kind of dab across the bottom. And then I'll add some other colors, whoops. My styrofoam board is being kind of noisy. I'll try and hold it with one hand as I dab across. And you can see that as my brush loses some of its paint, then the color of these little dabs gets different, and I like that. Now, I'm gonna add a little bit of, a little bit more of this light brown to just kind of change the color a little bit. And we're gonna do the same thing again. So I'm gonna mix that in, get it on my paintbrush, and I'm gonna dab across again. Just to give some nice texture to this sandy ocean bottom. I'm getting up nice and close to that crab. And hopefully that's not too loud with how the microphone is picking it up. It sounds almost like a little like, I don't know, rumble, rumble, earthquake to me, the way that the board is bouncing against my easel. I really like the way that this texture is developing. And I think it will look even better if we have a little bit of a little bit more of a yellow or maybe even a greenish yellow hue. So I'm going to, on a new spot on my easel, I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of green, a tiny bit of yellow, and then with a different clean brush, I'm gonna scoop out some white and mix that in all together. And we'll see, we'll see what this looks like. Whoa, that's really green. A little bit too green, I think. That's gonna look strange, so I'm gonna pull some of this to try and mute it down a little bit. Maybe even pull a little bit of this dark brown in here. Oh, that's looking a little better. Now it's not quite as quite as noticeably green, but it still has kind of a nice greenish hue. And then I'm gonna dab here a bit to make sure I get some of that extra paint off. And now when I go through, I should add just sort of a nice texture to some of these white spots without completely washing out the colors that I put on before. This type of painting I think is really fun. There's something very satisfying. And I think it's because, you know, normally you feel like you're not supposed to jab the paintbrush. And so to be able to jab the paintbrush on purpose and just sort of, I don't know, be a little more, but it'd be a little more free and messy with it. I think it's quite fun. Oh, but this board is quite noisy when I do that. I'm gonna have to listen to the replay of the video afterwards and see if it sounds like just crazy loud. Hopefully, hopefully the knocking sound is not crazy loud. Now, if you're when you're doing art like this, where you're doing making these textures, when you are done is all up to you, because this the little bit of white that we have here 
I can just say that that little bit of the white that's still in my painting is intentional. You know, it's part of my sandy background. It gives it sort of a nice color. Or I could say, you know what? I want to blend this better and I can just get a brush that is just wet. Oh good, and Leanna says, and Pamela says it's not too loud. Thank you. And so if I just get my brush a little bit wet and kind of come through in here and dab, that blends in some of those spots where it was a little bit white. Or you could decide that you want a yellow brown to kind of go over the whole top. How long you do on this section and how much paint you do is all up to you. And then now, we are ready to do our starfish, our sea anemones, and then of course our hermit crab here that has a sea anemone on top. And if I'm going fast or if you missed the beginning, you can always pause or go back. I'm going to pick a light blue, bluish green for this sea anemone up here. That's the first one I'm gonna paint. And then I'm gonna do the starfish a nice orange color. Now something really cool about sea anemones is that their, their mouth and their bottom are one and the same. They are an animal and they eat. And like all animals, after you eat, you digest your food and then some of it is gonna be stuff that you don't want. And you're gonna wanna poop it out when you're done digesting it. Well, with sea anemones, they only have one opening and their opening is their mouth and their bum at the same time. And that's right up here. And then, when they eat food, it goes down into this really cool digestive system down in the middle, and they can digest a wide variety of things. Most sea anemones, they kind of act like filter feeders, where they're eating really small stuff. You know, tiny little bits of plankton, things like that. But some sea anemones are really big, and they can eat fish or starfish. Some sea anemones are enormous. Now, if, if I had a lot of time and wanted to do a really detailed painting, I would want to outline every single tentacle on this sea anemone. But I'm going for more of an impressionistic style look, and so I'm just going to kind of make it more, more about stripes and colors. So these represent the tentacles of my sea anemone, nice colors of green all the way around and then I'm using fairly thick paint to try and give some texture and the inside part here will try and paint a little more smoothly. I'm going to add a little more dark green here to make it just a bit darker and I'll do another round of, of tentacles here trying to get most of the white space covered. If you find sea anemones in tide pools they often have developed this adaptation where they can close all of their tentacles in to try and conserve water. And so when the tide falls, they'll just sort of be this little round fleshy ball with sort of this sandy covering on the outside of their, their foot or their bottom part. So here's the bottom part of the sea anemone and then here are all the tentacles. Sometimes this bottom part is really long and they're kind of like up on a stalk and other times that bottom part is not very long and they're, they have more of a short, shortened, like stubby appearance. But the tide pool sea anemones I think are really fun to watch because since they're in such shallow water, you can get a really close view of them. If you ever have a chance to go to a tide pool and find some sea anemones, it's really, really fun to explore that and to see them. Now for the inside part, it's gonna look a little more realistic, a little bit better if we have a slightly different color. So I'm getting some of the white that was right at the edge of this little palette and it's, I'm keeping it kind of watery and light and we're just gonna paint a really light green, nice and smooth and watery straight across the inside of this entire jellyfish, not jellyfish, I can't believe I said that, this entire sea anemone here. And then this dark green part here in the middle, the sea anemone's little mouth opening, that I wanna have be a darker green. So I'm gonna get a little more of my dark green here, sort of mix it in. And then I'm gonna paint, paint our little opening right here. Why is that? And then a little bit of, a little bit of green there in the middle. 
So sea anemones, anemones, sea anemones eat small animals or plankton. And I told you some of them are so big, they can even, they can even eat starfish. But the ones that you see in tide pools are usually the smaller variety. Within hiking distance says that they'll spend hours looking at tide pools when they go to the coast. And I do too. Tide pools are just amazing. Oh, and for anybody who is watching from California, did you know that in California right now, they are having a red tide in parts of California. And the cool thing about this red, red tide is that the type of um, algae that's responsible for the red tide, it's an algae that bioluminesces at night. And so if you go to the coast just an hour or two after sunset, you'll see the waves glowing, which is really cool. So if anyone is living in California right now, I believe that some of the beaches just opened up again. Um, it's definitely worth going out to see the red tide. And you might be wondering, why do they call it a red tide if, if it's glowing blue? Well, during the day, the waters look kind of reddish because of all the algae that's bloomed. And there are only a few types of algae that then also bioluminesce, where you have a red tide during the day and then glowing water at night. But that's pretty cool. This starfish right here is kind of a baby starfish. It's pretty small and I'm coloring it orange. Starfish, just like the um, our sea anemones, they also only have one opening. They just have their, their mouth and their one stomach right down on the bottom. Marilyn says they'll check out the red tide in California. Awesome. Ooh, and Space Queen says, did I know that sun stars eat star starfish? I did not know that. Since we did this anemone as a green one, I think it would be fun to make this one pink. So I'm going to get some red and make up some pink for this sea anemone. But you can make yours any color you want. And if you look up, oh, and I'm glad that within hi hi hiking distance we mentioned this. It is true that during a red tide, you want to stay out of the water. The species that is in, um, that's causing the bloom right now in California is not one of the toxic ones, but there are several species of algae that during a red tide, they, they bloom and there's so many of them in the water that they produce a toxin that then makes the water pretty deadly and fish will die. And if you go into swimming into that water, you can get really sick because of the toxin that the algae produce. And so I would say anytime you have a red tide where you can see that water being pink, it is best to stay out of the water. And even though the one in California right now, I saw videos online of people surfing on the, you know, the water as it's glowing at night, and that looks pretty cool. And even though this one right now seems to be an algae bloom that is not toxic, if the conditions are right for that particular species of algae to be blooming, you know, they could be primed for another species of algae to start to bloom too, and it's just better, better not to risk it. So I'm bringing some pink around now for the tentacles of my pink anemone. And I'm not drawing very detailed tentacles, but I will try to come through with sort of some deeper pink or some white to kind of give the appearance of stripes because I blended that together so well that it just sort of looks like a like a pink donut. And I would like to have it look more like a sea anemone. So I'm just gonna get some plain white and I'm gonna make sort of some stripes here on my pink sea anemone because sometimes you'll see beautiful striped patterns in sea anemones. There we go. Now it looks a little bit more, a little bit more like those are tentacles. And now we'll paint the inside a light pink. That ended up being almost white. I'm going to grab just a little more pink to go on top of that. There we go. And then I'll get a darker pink for the mouth. Now, the way that sea anemones reproduce is really pretty amazing because there's so much variety. Some of them 
you know, kind of kind of like um, jellyfish. They'll they'll kind of release their eggs out into the ocean, and fertilization happens out there. But some of them, they get pregnant just like other animals get pregnant with the babies inside them, and then the babies are born out the mouth. Crazy, right? But most bizarrely of all, some sea anemones, they will actually split themselves in half. Or they'll reproduce by losing an arm, and then that arm will grow into another anemone. Not all of them can do that, but there are a few that can, and that's really pretty crazy. So if you take, you know, a fish comes along and bumps into the anemone really hard, and one of its little arms breaks off, some of them, that little arm, can actually grow into another anemone. And then other sea anemones, on purpose, they will split themselves in half. They'll get like a crack kind of in the middle, and it will get bigger and bigger and go up higher and higher, and then they'll just divide in half, and now you have two anemones, two clones, where before you just had one. So there's a lot of variety with how these Nidarians reproduce. This one I decided to go for a little sort of a bluish green color with my, my tentacles, but you can paint your sea anemones to be any color you want. I looked online while I was getting ready for this painting with a scientist session, and I saw candy cane striped white and red anemones, I saw purple anemones, I saw green anemones, I saw brown, I saw virtually any color you could think of, there is an anemone that color. Some of them even glow in the dark. So there is a lot of variety when it comes to the colors that you can pick. And we'll put our little mouth, a little darker there for the mouth, and there we go. I'm gonna say that that one is, is done. And for this top one here, I think we'll go with a purple. So I'm gonna get a light purple by taking some purple here and then adding a little bit of white. Scoop out some white from here. That is really pastel purple. So I'm gonna be using this, but I'll also be adding in some darker purple stripes. So first I'm just kind of give a background here to our sea anemone. And then the, the stem or the foot of the sea anemone is often not as colorful as the tentacles. So I'm gonna pull a little bit of this brown here to paint part of this foot. And then I'll get just a little bit of that purple to kind of give it a slightly different color than the rock. So there's the foot of our anemone. And now that I've got the foot and the body outlined a bit, I'm gonna try and get some real thick purple paint and do my my tentacles. And I totally agree. If you were using crayons um, or markers, all options are awesome. And it's really cool when I look at the pictures that people share from painting with the scientist online, I always love to see just the variety because we'll every, every, every episode we'll have people share pictures that they did with crayons pictures with markers, pictures with paints, and the markers and the crayons give really nice colors and textures that you don't get with paints. And then watercolors, of course, give very different textures than acrylics. It's just fun to see the variety. There we go, got some tentacles there with that sea anemone. And now we're ready to come on to our hermit crab. I'm going to paint the crab and the inside of the shell first, then we're gonna paint the outside of the shell, and then last we'll do our sea anemone. Oh, I heard the beep too. I, it was some notification on my computer, I'm not sure what. Um, anytime that happens, I think, man, I wish I knew what it was that was doing that, but I haven't figured it out yet. And I bet you've all had the same thing happen too, where sometimes there'll be a notification and you think, what in the world was that? And you're not sure. 
All right, for our hermit crab, we're gonna want a couple nice shades of brown, or you could even make it a colorful shell, because sometimes you see shells in the ocean that are very colorful. I'm gonna do sort of a light yellow brown for most of this shell. And I'm going to paint one side of it a little darker than the others. I'm gonna imagine that the light is coming from this direction, so I want to paint this lower part of the shell darker, this upper part lighter, and I changed my mind. I'm actually gonna paint the shell first and then the crab second. So let's go with this darker color that I got put together for the bottom part of the shell. Hopefully I have enough paint. If I run out, we'll just make do the best we can. And if you want to have stripes on your shell, you can certainly do that. Some shells have beautiful colors, beautiful stripes as part of their pattern. And now we'll get our lighter color paints, the same brown. I just mixed in some more white. And we'll paint the other part of our shell. And try to sort of blend those edges together just a little bit, but if they don't blend, that's okay. And then I'll be careful to go around these eyes because I'm going to leave the eyes unpainted, I think. So I just want them to be nice and white, except for in the middle part, I'm going to do a little black dot. In real life, Kermit, um, Hermit Crab's eyes are not quite this cartoony. But I think anytime we paint animals and painting with a scientist, it's fun to sort of, sort of do a blend of realistic painting and then add in cartoon eyes because it just makes them seem more friendly and cute. And I like cute things, especially cute hermit crabs. Ooh, fun fact. One of my first pets was a hermit crab and I named him Pinchy because when we first got him from the pet store, he was a little land hermit crab. You have hermit crabs that are underwater, aquatic, and you have hermit crabs that live on land. He was a little land hermit crab, and the very first time I picked him up, he pinched me really hard, <laughs> and it hurt, so I named him Pinchy. And after that, I learned how to pick him up where he wouldn't pinch me. There we go. So we've got the outside of our shell there. And next, I'm going to paint the inside of the shell. And for the inside of the shell, I want it to actually be fairly dark. So I'm gonna get just a tiniest bit of black and I'm gonna add a little bit of black to this inside part where I mixed up my brown. Now a bit of black goes a really long way when you're painting. It's easy for the black to just overwhelm the other colors. So I'm gonna get it a little bit wetter here. And then I'm just gonna bring in a bit. You can see now it looks kind of grayish. This is pretty good. I wanted to, it to be a darker color to show that the inside of this shell is kind of in shadow, but I didn't want it to be completely black, but I, I like how that turned out. Oop. Got a little piece of dried paint stuck on my paintbrush. Here we go. So we're just kind of painting around our hermit crab. So this is like the inside part of the shell that's all in shadow. And then right there in between the little rounded eyes. And then down here, we'll sort of paint that dark part that's peeking out from behind the legs too. And now we're ready to paint our crab. <laughs> and love the happy mood, not crabby. Yes, I agree. Get a little bit of paint here that is red and I'm gonna mix it in with my pink because I don't want like a pure red. I want a little bit of a, a pinkish red for most of the crab body, but then I am gonna add on a little bit of a redder color. So I'm getting this a little bit wetter than I normally do. And then I've gotta be sure that my brush isn't too wet. And I'm gonna paint just like we did before. One side of my crab is gonna be a little bit lighter and one side is gonna be a little bit darker. Carefully paint these little eye stalks. 
whoops, carefully paint the other eye stalk. And then I'm just gonna kind of feather it over lightly so that hopefully when I paint my darker colors, they blend in pretty well. This other side here, I also wanna be a little bit lighter. Now that we've got that part that is lighter, I'm going to add a little bit of dark red to this next little, this next little well over here. Whoops, there's one of my blue hairs from my wig that got into my paint. And we'll scoop in some of the pink and we wanna mix it in and just make it a little bit darker. Hopefully that's not too much darker. And now we're gonna paint this other, other side. So here's the bottom part of our claw, which is fairly red, a little bit darker. And then we'll paint this other leg here coming down. And get a little more paint and paint the other leg. Hermit crabs will make their shells out of literally anything that they can fit in. So I'm sure you've seen pictures of hermit crabs being in nice little seashells like this one, but they'll also make their homes out of, you know, old trash and plastic containers, tin cans, pretty much anything they can fit in that they can carry around. That's a good home for a hermit crab. Now you'll notice that my claw here is totally blending in with my body and I would like that to not be the case. So I'm gonna get a little bit of white and just put a bit of a, a highlight on the top of this claw. Hopefully this works. Whoa, that's a little too white, but that's all right because when we're painting, we can, we can blend things pretty well. So I'll get some pink. <laughs> that didn't really work, but that's okay because that's what, that's how painting goes sometimes. Let's see if I have a little paper towel here that I can dab with. Hmm. Kinda, kinda you can tell that that claw is a different color than the background. And maybe I can improve it if I get the darker pink color again, and then sort of reinforce that main part of the abdomen behind. We'll see if this works. All right, there we've got kind of more shadowy part here. I'm just gonna continue this on up. The crab's changing colors, you guys. He started out all nice and pink and he's getting a lot more reddish. And then I'll try and kind of fade that up into the eye stalks and let the eye stalks be a little lighter. And if you are painting and you make a mistake when you're painting, I like to say, that's a happy accident, like Bob Ross says. Or another phrase I like is, it's a beautiful oops. Just make it part of your art. All right, now we'll do that other, that other claw. And I'm making that other claw a little bit lighter. Because sometimes you will see some interesting color differences with crabs, crabs claws and legs, you can get quite a bit of variety of color even on the same crab. And we've got another leg here that I wanna have nice and red so it stands out. And another leg here. There we go. There's our little crab and the last little detail that we need is the eye. And I think that I saw a Sharpie marker lying around here. I don't see my Sharpie marker, but I see a dry erase marker. And I'm gonna take advantage of this because sometimes getting a little dot of paint to go where you want it to go can be really tricky. So I'm just gonna color in my eye with my dry erase marker. There we go. It is a happy little crab. And then the last thing that we need to do is paint our sea anemone up here. And I think I'm going to make it a green one like this green one over here. I think that would be a nice color to have my sea anemone be, but you can use any color that you would like. 
And the first thing we want to do is paint this body, this bottom body part of our sea anemone. And just like we did before, I'm going to use a bit of a brownish color because the foot of the sea anemone is often kind of a dull color compared to the tentacles. It's not nearly as bright. So I'm gonna come in here with a little bit of a darker brown, almost looks the same color as my rock. And then I'm going to add a little bit of white and make it just a little bit lighter so that the side that is, you know, in, in sunshine is a little bit, a little bit lighter. Gotta get just a little bit of water because my brush is getting a little dry. I have to say, anytime that I see a saltwater tank, I really like watching the sea anemones because there's something, there's something kind of mesmerizing about the way that the, the way that the tentacles move back and forth. Ooh, Space Queen asks, one day can we paint a blobfish? Blobfish are really cool animals. I can definitely add that to my list. Oh, and I should have mentioned at the beginning, one of our, um, one of the questions that we had or the requests we had was to do the Bermuda Triangle. So I did some research yesterday thinking like, hmm, could we paint something about the Bermuda Triangle? And it was really interesting research to do. It turns out that there is not nearly as much going on with the Bermuda Triangle as one would hope because the person who named it and who first sort of started all the stories about it, it turns out that a lot of the examples of ships disappearing that this person used, they were completely made up. They never happened. I was kind of surprised to discover that. So in real life, there may have been, you know, a couple cases of ships disappearing in hurricanes or other things, but in real life, there's actually not much happening in the Bermuda Triangle. And most of it is just a, a really good storyteller who's told kind of crazy stories that people enjoyed hearing and they became kind of a, a part of our lore. All right, here we go. Tentacles on our big house houseboat, kind of like a houseboat an anemone. You can almost think of it like here's our little house that the hermit crab has and the anemone is just on for the ride. Does this happen in real life, you might be wondering, and the answer is yes. There are in fact some some hermit crabs will intentionally try to plant anemones on their shelves because they provide protection because of their stinging, their stinging branches. Ooh, and another thing I should point out, and this is really cool. So we said that sea anemones were named for plants because they do look kind of like flowers, but they're not plants. But some of them are photosynthetic. So how would this work? Let me know in the chat if you have an idea. How can a sea anemone be photosynthetic if it's an animal. Do you want to come in and say hi, Math Dad? Well, I want to see what it looked like. Math Dad came in to check on my painting. Ooh, another one. Back so you can see. Yeah. There's a hermit crab with a sea anemone on his back. How big are they? Um, it all depends. The smallest sea anemones are only a couple millimeters across. The largest can be, oh boy, Let's see if I can remember from what I was reading yesterday. I think the largest can be like a foot and a half across. They could be really big. Wow. All right. <laughs> Several people saying, sing, Math Dad, sing. And I'm looking to see if anyone had any, any guesses or suggestions about how sea anemones would be photosynthetic. I'm adding some, some green here for like lighter tentacle arm movement. The tentacles are going everywhere because we're looking straight on from the side. Some are going up, some are going down, some are going sideways. And the, the reason why some sea anemones can be photosynthetic is because they actually have a symbiotic relationship with algae. So some sea anemones will invite algae to live inside them. The algae get a nice protected place to live and the sea anemones give those algae certain nutrients. And then the algae perform photosynthesis and the algae give the sugars that they make to the sea anemone. So it's like a kind of like lichen. Lichen do the same thing, but that's between fungus and algae. 
And this is a really cool symbiotic relationship. And there are several different species of sea anemone that do it. Now I'm going to paint just a tiny bit because I feel like the base of our sea anemone is kind of getting lost in the details. So I want to add just a little bit more brown and make the brown a little different to our base here. So I'm adding a little bit of brown and a little bit of green to the, the palette that I used before. And then I'm going to mix it in And then just like we did before with our dabs, we're just gonna give this a little bit of texture on the sea anemone. It's a little more shading on this one side just to help him kind of stand out. And then I'm gonna do that again, but with just a tiny bit more green. And then our, then our drawing will be done. And we'll just do a, a quick couple of questions before we finish up for good. So I got just the tiniest bit of green here. Kind of dab all over this face because sometimes the foot of the sea anemone does look just a little bit greenish. Get the tiniest bit more. There we go. Now I think he stands out just a little bit better. And the very last thing to do is to get some of that original blue from painting our background that I saved and just work in a tiny, tiny bit of blue there where we had a few white spots. Whoops. And that blue looks a little bit different than my other one, but that is all right. All right, my painting is done. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed learning more about sea anemones. And I'll come over and look at the chat now and just answer a couple quick questions. Thank you again, special thank you to Within Hiking Distance and Nerding for Nature. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, and here's a cool, cool fact. Some smaller fish swim underneath sharks to be safe from attack. I have to say, if you're out in the natural world where it's eat or be eaten, there are some big advantages to pairing up with other animals that have defenses like sea anemones or sharks. Does anyone have a quick question before we finish? <laughs> Un Unplanistic asks if, I, if I've asked Mark Rober yet for a collab. This would be a good one to bring Math Dad in and just talk about the difference in scale. I think Mark Rober has like 11 million subscribers. So 30,000 to 11 million is actually a much bigger difference than three to 100. It's a huge, huge difference. Can we do a brain teaser video? That's a great suggestion. And I will say, I'm gonna share a link really fast with you guys in the chat because we are doing a survey about summer content. What type of videos would you guys like to see over the summer? So I'm going to paste it right here. And if you haven't yet filled out the survey, take a minute to rank which type of live streams and which type of videos you would like the best. And then Space Queen, I don't see your last question. Oh, do sharks help any kind of fish? That's a good question. Sharks probably help certain types of small fish by eating bigger fish. Because, um, you know, if a fish is too small, a shark's not going to really notice it or pay attention to it. Um, but I think for the most part, for most fish, fish, sharks are like, ah, swim away. All right. Oh, and I love this. Um, within Hiking Distance said it's the quality that counts, not quantity. And that is completely true. I have to say, when it comes to subscribers, I absolutely love painting with you guys. This painting live stream is a bit smaller than the other live stream, but I love the interactions and that I get to see your guys' work afterwards and answer your questions. It really is quality. Quality is what matters. And I feel very fortunate to have my viewers and you guys here with us today. I hope you guys enjoyed our live stream and please share your pictures with me. You can post them online if you're on social media, either on Instagram or Facebook. I would love to see your art. And if you don't have social media, you can always email me your, your pictures. I really enjoy seeing just the variety of colors and textures and shapes that happen when you paint along with me and I hope you enjoyed. 
learning about cnidarians today and sea anemones. The next time that you are by a saltwater fish tank or the next time that you see a tide pool, take a look and see if you can see some of these fascinating animals. Take care. Bye.